Alright, project two. On uh, trailer customization modifications. We're going to do this back end. What I'm thinking I want to do is take out all these boards and then maybe right about here. I'll weld in a piece of three inch channel right along this edge. Now I'll weld, a weld on D-ring to the channel. Then I'll split this board like such and that's how it'll support it. And then put this board back. That's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Alright, let's get her done. So this will give you an idea of what I'm thinking of. This is where those uh, boards were laying. I lay one of these in. I weld it there. I weld it there. Should be good enough to mount a D-ring right about here. That's what I'm thinking anyway. I thought about plating this in and then adding a gusset. But I really wouldn't be adding that much. Well, I guess I would. Because most of the load will be coming this way. But I don't know. If I get a good fat bead in there, it might work. Especially if I weld it up here, too. Hmm. I'm going to contemplate this a bit. Alright, had some time to think on it, and one of the things I thought of, it looked as though something came down off the deck at one point, and it must have caught right here, because this here steel was actually bent over top and, and fully conformed to uh, this uh, piece of round stock that's... Uh, holding up the uh, round stock for the ramp so I straightened that out and I've been working on getting this straight which if you can see my gap I mean granted it's clamped right now we're letting it cool I think as it, if it cools slowly with the clamp on it it's more likely to retain its shape we'll see how that works if I have to I'll heat it up again I, I heat it a little bit back here too because I think it put a little twist in it back here but I think we got that completely out um, you can see over here what I'm talking about as far as it being out of place as opposed to over here now with the clamp on and the heating and beating gone by. This is like a triple compound move. I know what, what I probably could have done was just cut this weld off, cut these welds, and then cut the welds off at either corner and just replace this whole piece of angle iron but all the stores are closed because it's a Sunday and it's not too big of a waste of my time I've been at it about an hour and I think I knew them pretty good so we'll see if we can save it if not I will cut it off and start over but time will tell all right let's get well I tell you what proper heat treat a little bit of application of heat and some pressure and a little hammering and you can do really really well you can look just about straight down you have to forgive that piece of uh, 3 8 steel there it's not holding anything uh, per se a 3 8 plate actually clamped to the uh, piece of steel channel below and what I used that for was to get a hold of this piece of angle and and draw it in with another clamp. I clamped this to this uh, four, or, uh, four inch channel to bring this piece of angle back. But I tell you what, that's pretty lickety split there. I mean, yeah, there's a couple little waves in it. And I could probably spend the rest of the day pounding them out and getting it perfectly straight. But... Let's face it, nobody's ever going to get this close to it to see it, but at least it doesn't look like a mangled mess anymore. 
I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that, uh, there's a little way there, but, hey, what the hell, I, I think that's pretty good, I'm actually really tickled about that, how well that came out, because I often, I thought twice about cutting that off and just starting over, but I think we might be able to get by, I guess, and it's a little tight, uh, which is good, because, you know, you don't want your boards just floating in there, and it'll probably um, snug down with time, people driving over it and stuff. But they're still tight going in. So that tells me that what we're probably going to do whenever we go to put the boards in for real, I'll just put a little chisel or something and, and just pry up on that crack just a little bit. Just enough to get the, um, some boards underneath there whenever I go to set them back in. But no, I, I, I like it. I mean, that was not even an hour and a half of my time. And I did pretty good. Oh, in case anybody was wondering about my torch setup, I don't know if anybody noticed this funky tip. Um, this is called a scarfing tip. Uh, we used to use them at work quite a bit. They're actually meant for uh, cutting out welds. On like two pieces of joint steel, but there I found out on a job at work they're really good for putting a lot of heat into something too, like heating up a large surface area. So I kind of prefer them whenever I'm doing uh, generalized heating. I should have been a blacksmith though. That's what I'm thinking. I'm a machinist and I got welding certification. But after this little doohickey, I think uh, I think blacksmithing would have been a, something cool to get into. Might have to do some more of it. Yeah, that's pretty much all it was, just heat and beat and moving metal. That's what I love about steel. If it isn't where you want it, you can move it. If it doesn't have the shape you want it, you can change it. That's pretty cool. Alright. Alright, here's the plan. I've already welded in this four inch piece of C channel here. Uh, well, it's solid across the bottom and solid across the top. Now I ground just the outside of the weld down so that uh, this piece of uh, three inch can fit. Okay. Then I'm gonna run a big long fat pass right here. And another pass right here. And that should lock this down pretty good. Because my D-ring is going to sit right about here. Um, I'll probably put a uh, plate on it to distribute the weight. but Or distribute the force. But my D-ring is going to sit something like this here. Okay. So that's going to be pulling up almost directly on here. Now I could gusset it. I'm arguing with myself about it. Because that seems like it could be overkill. Because... I don't know. We'll see. I might guess it just because I have the metal. But we're going to get this one side done, see how it looks, see if I got any problems with it, and then uh, go on from there. Alright. Alright, we'll show you what we ended up with here. That's way overkill. Even I'll admit that it's way overkill, but I did end up gussing it. A uh, couple real hot, real fat passes. There's a plate, you can see it better here, there's a plate, plate welded to the channel, and the rings welded to the plate, so it kind of spreads the load force out just a little bit more, I don't know if that was really necessary for what I'm doing or not. From what I said, though, too. Now, why didn't I reinforce this side? Well, it wasn't really the weight traveling over it that bothered me. I wasn't afraid of it, like, pushing down in, like, like loading a tractor up on it. I wasn't afraid of anything just pushing it down. What I was afraid of is the force being exerted off that ring, pulling 
the back end of the trailer, you know, and coming free. But it would have to break a couple pretty good welds there. Like I said, the, the gussets might have been overkill, but they're there. I think, if anything, I'd probably break, uh, it's hot, so I don't want to touch it, but it'd probably break here first, which I'm all right with. <laughs> if it breaks there, then, uh, we're in trouble, because I laid in, I mean, that's a hot pass, that's, that's, that's this welder maxed out. But now to make this, make this on the other side, then I take a couple of them deck boards, two of them, cut three inches off of one side. Because that's that's part of the whole plan here, so that you know you trim the one deck board here and it'll just lay right beside it. I might take a couple of them up to my dad's where he has a table saw and cut them off, and then we'll stick them all back in, and then clamp her back down, and then thinking about just welding those ones on like such just right to that plate because I can't really figure out any other good way of doing it but there it is I promised the wife I'd make supper so I better get going I have to come back out here later and clean up all right that's both of them I'm both done See, it's up. I even got them painted now. Yeah. A little red primer, a little black paint, and uh, you can tell the difference. That's that's the old, the new, and I think those will work out really good. I'll eventually have to cut a couple boards and stick them on. This is probably gonna need another coat anyway. But, uh, yeah, I didn't realize it until now. I don't know if you can see that, but that there, this side's bent. The pipe's bent. See how it starts off kind of narrow, and then it gets wider, and then it gets narrower. And then this side... It's pretty consistent the whole way. Mm, something to worry about. Maybe never. In case some of you are wondering why I do stuff and why I don't do some stuff, like why I didn't gus at the front end. First off is, is because, like I said, most of your force is going to be applied in this direction. Because you're, you're, you're chaining something down down there. Now... The boards that were on here were just laid on. So in theory, instead of putting that weld there, I could have just laid it on and uh, been good, you know, because it just would have stayed put. Cause there's a, a one of these, uh, you can see them over there, underneath the ramp there maybe. Ah, there we go. See those angles? They lay across the, the butt ends of the board. You can see where they're not painted, and then there's another one that comes down. So the boards are actually not fixed through here. They're just clamped on clamped on this end, clamped on that end, and they stay put. So I really didn't need to put anything because those clamps are there, but you know, I figure I'd tack them anyway. And then the second thing is, eventually... I'm going to take and cut this off right about here, or maybe this side of the pocket, but right about there, and extend this trailer about another four feet, and then maybe weld that dovetail back on or make a new one, I don't know. I'm not really 100% sure what I want to do there. And yes, I know I'll have to slap my axles back. They'll have to go back uh, approximately three feet or so. I'm not going to do the math in my head right now, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to make these fenders removable, or, well, probably a set of fenders removable. I don't know if I'll be able to get these off and save them, but we'll try. Um, but I always did want shackles back here. Now, 
I just got to figure out how I'm going to put some shackles on the front. Because this here, this is only like maybe 3 16 angle. And I don't want to just weld straight to it because I'm afraid that whenever the sh it pulls in this direction, it might actually pull this up. This lip might do one of these numbers and rise up on me. So I thought about drilling down through because there's another piece of angle on the bottom and then putting a couple bolts through to keep it from, you know, pulling. But the problem with that is that on the other side, or you can't fit your drill down in here straight. I'd have to drill it at an angle, which would put me through uh, this bulkhead. So my next idea... I was already playing with my uh, plasma torch. I never had my plasma up on 240 volts before, but it works pretty good that way. But just to take a couple of these, and now it's not ground off, and drill like one, two, three, four holes in it, and then put another plate on the back side of the same size. And then drill bolts through the trailer this angle the bulkhead put a couple washers here for well, excuse me washers here for spacers and then bolt everything together and then just weld my d-ring to the face of this and i was looking up they say 3 8 bolts have a shear value of 7000 pounds which these are 15000 pound d-rings but the trailer's only rated at 10 and the biggest thing I'm probably going to put on is a tractor at about 75. So it should be way more than enough. Uh, I know 3 8 bolts don't sound like a whole lot. But I could go to half inch. I might still do that just for the sake of me sleeping at night. I mean you can't underbuild it. And the extra bolt's not going to add that much weight. I don't think anyway. I'm thinking too much. Alright, time to get to work. Alright, these are the plates. Uh, well, the D-ring to one, put another one on the back side. And if you ever want to make a bunch of stuff, a bunch of plates, a bunch of whatever, with the holes all in the same spot, the best way I ever found is uh, just put a little, couple little tack welds the whole way down two sides. done get your chisel out and bust them tacks up and be good to go but 
D ring. Gonna go on a little something like that. I got to work pretty good. I might set those a little lower so that that way uh, they ride a little lower. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, it's getting late. Time for me to go in the house and go to bed. Well, go to the house, do stuff for the army, and then go to bed. Oh, here it's always, buddy. Let me show you something. It's always easier if you take it like this and you push down. Try pushing down. Put all your weight on it. There you go. I'd like the public to know I did not push on that. On the new stuff. There's my D-ring mount for the front of the trailer. See over there, I drilled. The, well, I'll show you in a minute. You can't really see, but uh, yeah, four and a half inch bolts holding it to the bulkhead, and then uh, these are 15,000 pound D rings. Now, do I expect to put 15,000 pounds on it? No, because that's way more than the trailer can even hold. However, I do think. You know, I like the size of them. I like the fact that uh, I could chain, I could use chains on them. I didn't want to mount it permanently in case I ever had to change the deck. You know, if I welded it fast, I wouldn't be able to take up uh, this piece of angle if I had to and to get these deck boards out. Because those deck boards are going to go. And yes, I do need some longer bolts. They're just a little short. But I think my design works out really, really well. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I got to cut that center off. And I move over here, I'll show you. See the holes. Now they're drilled on this side too. Find her down. I got a couple more minutes and I gotta go eat supper because we gotta go to a birthday party tonight. Alright. If I don't do any more videos today, I'll see you tomorrow, maybe when it's finished up. And cleaned up. This is this is a wreck. That crap everywhere. Hoses, cables, all kinds of stuff. Alright, it's dirty, it's messy, but it's done. Bolts there, plenty of stick out, new jack, forgot to paint it, I'll have to get the paint back out real quick. Straighten out the back side, new D-rings, I'd say it blends in kind of nice with the the boards. There's just about as much of a gap between each board as there is there. I even straightened and uh, screwed down that. Oh, let's go take a look at the new spare tire carrier. I kind of wish I would have bent these bars in a little further, but We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Because I might end up putting a chain on it or something anyway. Um, like I said, it doesn't really add a whole lot to the width of the trailer. Or at least it shouldn't be. It looks to be fairly in line. We'll see how it works. Before it's come to worst, I'll take that plate off and move a stupid thing. Maybe put it on a tongue. I don't know. Alright. Oh. And I threw these here just because. Well, because. 
Needed a place to store them, and it looked good. One toolbox. One of these days, um, like I said, I'll, I'll be getting a, a winch. And it'll be going right in about there. That's why I took that plate off. It's laying over there. That, and it looked kind of stupid to me. But now, what's nice is I can overhang the front if I have to. You know, get the bumper way up there. We'll see how it works. All right. That'd be it. Uh, when the weather turns a little bit, maybe I'll get a demo and pull a truck or something up on to see how it works. Let's see if anything's in the way. I don't think it will be, but you never know. Alright, have fun, enjoy yourselves, and that's it.